Is this a must-win game? I think so. All right, it's the Texas Rerun. Ryan Broniger, Matt Browning, Roy May here. Busy Thursday as David and uh, his family are on vacation. And uh, I'm taking the rain. So I like to call it it's the B-team show with the A-team guests. So Roy, oh, that's sweet of you. Roy and, Roy and Matt uh, <laughs> close us out with the fan show, but we, we talked to Olin Buchanan, who's in Nashville ahead of the Aggies game tonight against Ole Miss. We talked to Stephen McGee. Talked a lot about Trev Alberts uh, and the influence that – uh, he could have and, and what influence ADs have in general in the modern era of college athletics. And then uh, had Logan Lee come in to talk about basketball. And then these two guys yes. both think the Aggies win tonight. We yes. do. Win. And, win. I, and I think they win and I think they make the tournament. And Matt is still a little. I, I'm, I'm still butt hurt from two years ago. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm fingers crossed. That's, what, that's it. Here's the rewind. Is this a must win game? I think so. Uh, I, I I don't know if beating Ole Miss gets them in the NCAA tournament, but I know, but I feel strongly that if they lose, that they're out. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think it's as close to a must-win game as you could uh, come up with. Um, I, I wonder what adjustments is Ole Miss going to do defensively to try to keep Manny Obasaki from exploiting them the way he did last week and then what adjustments to those adjustments will buzz and manny make yeah look i'm not a basketball guy there are going to be people driving around listening to this program that understand basketball at a much higher frequency and rate that i do and they're they may listen to this and they go boy he's completely wrong because let me tell you something Owen. i've listened to you and david talk baseball in here i'm like well they're completely wrong but that's the only thing that i know everything about right <laughs> If I'm completely wrong, all I ever do is say, well, based on what I'm hearing from Ryan Broniger. <laughs> yeah, good. That's a good job. You're, yeah, I'm probably completely you're a professional wrong, at throwing me under the bus. <laughs> What's that? I said, you're a professional at throwing people under the bus. That's good. Well, I'm, just, I'm just saying what, I, you know, I'm repeating what I've been Anyway, told. what, what anyway. I was, was going to say about basketball, it seems to me that – when since they have inserted Manny Obasky kind of in that not lead guard spot, but it's it seems like Buzz and his staff did a great job of adjusting and, and putting the most athletic five they could on the floor for a lot for big portions of the game. And when you do that, you're talking about Wade and Boots, obviously, then Manny, mm -hmm. Anderson Garcia, mm -hmm. and Solomon Washington. When you have those five on the floor, that's as athletic as that team is going to get. And I think We've seen the plus minuses greatly in favor of that five when they're on the floor, and Manny's a key part to that. Uh, Manny's where it starts. How much of an influence should an athletic director have, not only on football, but on the individual sports themselves? You know, it's a great question, and I'm perplexed at what an athletic director actually does. And it's no disrespect to Trev Alberts or any of them. Um, I don't know what they do. I, I, I can't, like, I can't say – um, I know, I got, you know, some people say, oh, they do a lot of fundraising for sports. And I, I would, I don't know, I've heard disagreements with that argument, right? I, does the 12th Man Foundation um, do the, the primary fundraising or is the athletic director actually out there doing fundraising? Um, you know, you have the, the, the budgets behind the scenes, right, of the finances of the different sports programs. But is the athletic director actually doing that? Um, or are they out there just politicking with people? I, I really... I don't know. Um, I know that we, it gets a lot of headlines and it has certainly um, in the last, you know, three months or so. I, I guess one thing Aggie fans are pretty aware of is that they seem to be able to mess up a coaching hiring decision pretty easily. But other than that, uh, and, you know, I, and let me say this one more thing while I'm on my AD rant, I don't understand why an athletic director is in charge of making a hiring decision at a, at a head coach position. Like why, why are they responsible for that? This, these athletic directors, a lot of which have never even played the game. What do they know about what a good offensive coordinator is or what a good head coach should be like? That's where, you know, it'd be, it'd be like you, Ronnie, coming to me and telling me what a, what a good investment manager could look and act like, you know, that just, uh, you would never do that. And in the same respect, I feel like a lot of these guys are, 
you know, just relying on a sports agent to tell them who they think is a good coaching candidate, which I, I just completely disagree with. Well, I, I think in a and in A&M's defense there with Trev Alberts, he obviously played the game. I wanted to talk about what it did for the fan base and just the atmospheres in Olsen Field last Sunday and then Tuesday night was as good of a midweek atmosphere against a team not named Texas as I've ever seen in that ballpark. Just your thoughts so far on what the 12th man has done inside your ballpark. Yeah, really. I'm uh, just really proud. I just can't say proud of them. Just, they've been awesome. Um, we've obviously, you know, I personally made a push on social media. We're, we're trying to make a push for people to, to share their tickets, to you, you know, don't just buy tickets, use your tickets. If you're not going to use your tickets, send them to somebody. I mean, send them to me. I'll, uh, I'll make sure they get out to somebody. Um, and, and then when you get to the ballpark, don't be afraid to make some noise, you know? Uh, you know, I, I don't have a problem if you, you know, I, I hear the moans and groans or the little jabs when, when we don't do well. That's fine. That's part of the deal. Uh, but when we do do well, make sure you stand up and cheer. And I think they, the 12th man led by Section 203 um, had, had a text conversation with uh, the guys that run that deal and said, hey, man, I need you to help get these people you know, two outs and two strikes. We've got to get off our feet. We've got to get on our feet. We've got we to gotta create some atmosphere here. Um, ideally what you want is, you know, you want the crowd to push the team and you want the team to motivate the crowd. You want both, right? Some places the crowd only cheers when the team does well. And then there's places where the crowd, you know, you go to some of these places in the league. I mean, they're on their feet, they're cheering two outs and two strikes or finishing off a hitter, even when their team's down a little bit, they're, they're kind of working together. Um, to create an atmosphere that's tough for the other team to play in. And, and I think Texas A&M uh, uh, hasn't always had that super, I mean, postseason, yes. Uh, but now, we, now we've had it in back-to-back regular season non-conference games, and it's been awesome. crowd's been awesome. Uh, the weather's been great. That always helps. Um, I'm glad. I think we're supposed to get a bunch of rain here this weekend, so I'm glad we're on the road. Uh, but we get back next week, and we have four straight games. Uh, you know, I think Prairie View and then three against uh, Mississippi State. So we're going to need them out there and uh, fill those seats up and, and be as loud as they can. I'm kind of tempted to say Gonzaga is going to go deep because every time they're like a number one, they, they make it, but you never have confidence that they're going to win it all. Now that no one's really been talking about them and they still they've, – they've got Nebhardt and – They've got good guard play. They've got a couple of a couple of guys that can stretch the floor. I mean, why yeah, not this they year? They've got a coach that's done it. They've got a coach that is is elite. I mean, he just he he's a staple in the tournament. Right. And he's done it at a school that is in the middle of nowhere in the Pacific Northwest continues to get But it's but it's a different feel for them when you when you go in as a number 1 but everybody's got some doubts cuz you're not in a big conference and they ah, yeah, you beat up on your conference mm-hmm. but that conference isn't very good. There, there's a difference going in and, and people expecting you in all eyes to be on you say, can they play with the big boys because they, they haven't played in, in the SEC or the Big 12 or the ACC. And now it's more of a, what are they going to do this year? All right, last thing before I let you go. Feet to the fire. Does a and win tonight? Yes. And do they get into the tournament? Uh, yes, they win tonight. Um Yes, they get into the tournament. There you go. And and, and I, I think, like I said, if they lose to Kentucky in, this, in the second game, they're going to be sweating bullets, but I still think they get in. I st- they, now, they can't get blown out by Kentucky, but I think that if they win tonight, when they win tonight, and they play Kentucky, I think they get in, and there's probably a 65-35 chance that they do. That's I'm way more bullish now on them getting in with a win tonight than I was maybe a week, week and a half ago, without question. The more I look at some of these metrics and what has historically mattered to the committee, now and there are certainly a sect of Aggies that are listening, going, "Well, yeah, we won all these games in the tournament the last two years, SEC tournament, and didn't you know didn't make I mean, a but, hill of but, beans." Hey, it, it, but they're not wrong. No, they're not. They're not wrong. But they, that those teams also the, the amount of quad one and quad two wins like that has way sure. like that has been a very important factor in choosing teams uh, historic. All right, gentlemen. You know, you know the drill. What do they like, do? share, subscribe, comment, and click the notification bell so you never miss another text Ags Rewind. And share. And share. Oh, and share it. All those things. All okay. <laughs> David, enjoy your vacation. Come back with a good tan. <laughs>